That's right, we are live right now. This is Grimnir. I am your host for tonight on the Balls to the Wall program. Moose Girl is out on the town having a good old time listening to some bluegrass band. I, I know she told me who it was, but I can't recall. I get all them bluegrass bands a little bit mixed up. Not all of them. Not all of them, but uh, I get quite a few of them mixed up. So uh, anyway, she's out there tonight having fun. Uh, she said she was going to be streaming the audio of that particular show on Mixler. Mixler. I'm not sure exactly how you say that. M-I-X-L-R. I say it Mixler. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm sure she's having a good time, but uh, we're going to miss her, as we always do whenever she's not here. And like I said, we are live. It is Friday night, April 19, 2019. Yeah, the official false flag day of history. That's the way it works. Yes. So, uh, what can I say? Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that some more later. Uh, but let me say hi and howdy to all the folks out there in all of the various places they may be, wherever that may be. Uh, I see Blackbird has retweeted us over there on the Twitter. Hey, Blackbird, how you doing, man? Blackbird9, by the way. Uh, <laughs> over there on Minds.com, we uh, posted up over there. I, I can never tell, though, what's going on on Minds, if anybody's listening in or not. Freedoms Network, howdy to you all over there on the Freedoms Network side. Uh, always good to have you there with us, and we do broadcast live on Freedoms Network. Also on RealLiberty.org, we also have a player set up over there. So howdy to all the RealLiberty.org folk. If you're on listing on RLMRadio.xyz, which many folks do, uh, good to have you there with us. But come on over, jump on in to the uh, Freakers Ball show page. And you'll be able to catch the video in the chat and the audio, everything there, right there on RealLibertyMedia.com, Freakers Ball Show page. So, join us. One of us. One of us. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's, that's an old uh, ref, a reference from a movie called Freaks. Some of you may have seen it. I think it's the 1930s, that movie came out, Freaks. Freaks? Freaker Ball? Yeah. Yeah! Anyway, um, <laughs> let me say hi to everyone here in the chat. Before we move along, we got the uh, barman and Mr. Cowboy Tech. Hey, CD! Uh, rockin', yeah! Uh, we got myself and the Mighty Moose Girl are both here in the chat, although, like I said, Moose Girl is not around. We got Miss Kate and DC. We got Asmo and Beth Z and Chelsea Doniel at Echelon. Mr. Free Enslaved. How you doing there, Free, buddy? Uh, we got uh, Don C. I B Don C. Java Doctor, uh, Meester Brow, Meister Brow, the Ponder Gander, who did his show earlier today. Uh, we got Rain, and we got oh, Grams left, huh? Not Grams. Yeah, she did her show too. Uh, we got Rob Works, Mister Rob Works, passing that bubbler around as he do. He's a he's a he's a good 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 guy. That one. Uh, we got Mister Romes as well, who. Seems like Rome's broke the Dobbs coin again. I, I'm not sure what happened, but something happened on the Dobbs coin where it reached its limit to where it was supposed to start switching over to point of stake, a uh, proof of stake, <laughs> and, and the chain just stopped. I think we saw that before, though. We got the Vanna White and Weather Dork Butts. We got Mr. Phantom and a Weldon Beetle. This circle, the lovely circle. Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota Frumpy, Goober, Gooberzilla. Yep, he's still here. He's on this planet. He has not flown off in a spaceship as yet. Uh, we have Gromit and JJ's and Kozu in the Karl Marx crazy ass bot. We got Kiss and Pone Sauce, the sock puppet, and uh, Vanna VV White, VV Height. <laughs> Yeah, I think he was thinking VV was going to look like a W there. And we got Mr. Vinny Cuss, the cussing Vinny dude. All right, so let's see what's going on. Everything from dope smokers, liberty fans, and rocket scientists all in one place. That would be what this Real Liberty Media has. Yes, indeed, we have we have all of those. And Cowboy Texas, do not leave out the freaky low high life group. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Also, the day today, oh, yes, that's right. 
that is one of the things that happened today is the beginning of the American Revolutionary War. Yeah, was that Lexington and Concord? Yeah, anyway, I'll get to some of that, that uh, this day in history crap later on because a lot of bad stuff happened on this day. But a lot of good stuff happening tomorrow because tomorrow is 420. Yes, indeed, it's 420, the official 420. And uh, <laughs> so hopefully you're all geared up, should I say, for 420. Yeah. Um, if not, you know what can I, I can't I can't help you out there. I, I have no way of helping you out on that on that situation. But it should be fun to watch uh, the news from around various places. People getting uh, a little jolly in the streets. Yes, up there in Colorado, which is just just right to my north, over there in California and state of Washington, state of Michigan. I think has got some big plans going on. A lot of 420 stuff in various places where they have quote legalized unquote uh, the 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 herb. However, they never really legalized anything. Well, uh, they they've regulated it heavily so that they could. Uh, gain profits from people that like it. Although, they almost all of them have done it in a very, very poor manner <laughs> where they wind up uh, making you pay a lot more if you buy it through the legal channels uh, there in those states. Some of them. Not, not all of them, but some of them have. Uh, in, in Canada. Canada's done the worst job of everybody, but eh, what do you expect? Uh, but anyway, so it's not uh, legalized. I mean, you can't just like just start growing it in your backyard, uh, pretty much anywhere, uh, because they don't want, they don't like that. And and you can't just go out and buy a pound of it because they oh uh, you got more than this tiny amount that we have told you that you're allowed to have without getting in trouble. <laughs> Bunch of control freak assets is what they are. Um, anyway, <laughs> so that's tomorrow, 420, and then on uh, Sunday is the uh, Zombie Jesus Day, or commonly known as Easter, uh, and, and some people get into that stuff, I know, I know, I know there are people that, they like, uh, there's certain uh, groups of folk, and my, when I was a child, my, my family was a, a, one of those groups of folk that on Easter and or uh, Christmas Eve, I guess it was. I'm not sure if it was Christmas or Christmas Eve. I don't, I don't recall that closely. But that was the only times of year that uh, my mother would drag us off to go attend a church service because, you know, if you go twice a year to a church, then you're good to go. That's, that's really all you need, according to, I guess, a lot of people. I, I don't know. I don't know exactly how many it works for, but it seems to be a common theme, a, com a common thread. Now, up here in New Mexico, there apparently the uh, certain people go on what they call a pilgrimage to certain places. And, and I'm not really sure why, but there's something up in Santa Fe where they, a bunch of people walk up the hill, whatever, carrying the cross over their shoulder or whatever. Also, somehow, and I heard on this on the radio today, and I, all of all the years I've been here, 13, 14 years now, I had not heard this before, but apparently there's a pilgrimage from Edgewood to Moriarty. I've never seen any pilgrims coming on through. John Wayne never talked about the pilgrims. Ishtar, Goober says, yeah, okay, that's fine, whatever. Uh, it's so tired. It is, uh, Easter is stolen from what the Christians consider pagans, uh, those that are not necessarily of the Christian faith. Uh, but they, they're the ones that would celebrate uh, both Christmas and Easter. Uh, Christmas would, was actually the Yule, uh, and, which came at, at, the, at the winter solstice and uh and Easter was was at the at the spring equinox, so um, that's where that comes from. But I, I don't really, whatever. Well, you believe whatever you do, and and, and celebrate however you like, and have a good time. Uh, tomorrow is 4:20. Easter is Sunday. 
and you'll all have a good time with all that. Anyway, we're going to kick it off with some jams right here, right now, for you. Um, this is this this opening set's going to be a little weird one. Uh, <sighs> I'll tell you about it after the set, because <laughs> I, I don't I don't really quite understand it all. But here you go. This is uh, well, enjoy. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a great rendition of that song, but I hate that video. Five Finger Death Punch, they're, they're well known for their hero worship. Uh, they're big fans of various statism things. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, like I said, I really I really love the video. Uh, I mean the, the song, but not the video. I hate the video. But uh, it's Five Finger Death Punch doing Kenny Wayne Shepard's Blue on Black with Kenny Wayne Shepard and Brian May. And, uh, you know, Brian May is awesome. I, I don't know if you remember the, the, that he was in Queen, but, uh, yeah, he, he was great. Uh, well, still is great, obviously, play, if you just watch that video. But uh, just knock off that crap of worshipping these idiots in uniform. Anyway, before that, we had Weezer do a hash pipe. And we kicked it off with a song. Um, it, it's the uh, White Stripes Seven Nation Army, but it was done uh, to the kind of a Game of Thrones theme, which I'm not familiar with Game of Thrones at all. I've never seen it. Uh, but th this was called the White Walkers Seven Kingdom Army by the Merkins, uh, which I assume is Americans. Uh, anyway, um, I, 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 just, I just like the song, you know, the uh, <laughs> Seven Nation Army, and I, and I thought that was a good, uh, a good deal there with all that. So, uh, anyway, weird set because you know, one song I don't know what they're talking about really. All these White Walkers. It it looks to me, and I, like I said, I've never seen the Game of Thrones, but it looks to me like they may have stolen some. Uh, Concepts from from other uh, zombie series. Now I don't is is Game of Thrones a zombie series? I I I, I don't know. I I, I just I, I don't understand. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, yeah, but good music. All all it was good music. Um, of course. Um, how could it not be? Right. It was played here on Balls to the Wall, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. So uh, right. Anyway, there's that. Uh ba 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 ba. What else? What else? What else? What else was I gonna say? I don't know what I was gonna say, but I, I'm just, I'm just here loading up songs for the next set, and uh, that's how that goes. All right. Everything looking good here. Yep. Everything looking good. Everything looking good over there. I gotta, I gotta check all my. My broadcast tools, make sure everything's working proper, and it all looks great to me. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Click on the, what now? There's an older version. What? Click, what? Click on the link called Bloody Disgusting. Oh, I, I love the Bloody Disgusting site. I actually follow them on Twitter. You or, uh, oh, that's just a dinosaur. Okay. Well, why do I need to see a dinosaur? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, terrific. Thanks for that. Um, but, 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 but I have a story here for... And where is that? Uh, da, 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 da. Here it is. Oh, that's not the one. Uh, I'll, I'll do that second. Um. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I know it's in here. I'm just looking for it. It's, it's in my list. Um. Where did I put it? Huh. Oh. Huh. Oh. Why am I not seeing this link that I'm looking for? Okay, we got that one, and we'll get to that in a minute, but that's not the one we want. Um, ba 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 ba. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay. This first story may be of particular interest to you, Gooberzilla, 
but it may be of particular interest to anybody that, uh, well, you decide. It looks like a dinosaur to me. I don't know. Okay, anyway, um, so here we are on Sputnik News. Uh, this came out uh, yesterday. Game-changing territory. U.S. Navy reportedly designs UFO-like craft in secret. A notable UFO investigator who formerly worked for the British military noted that the design of the craft described in the patent looks similar to that of suspected UFO allegedly encountered by U.S. fighter pilots over the Pacific 15 years ago. The U.S. Navy scientist named Salvatore Cesar Pays has filed a patent for the unusual flying craft that employs the inertial mass reduction device to attain extreme speeds which looks like something straight out of a conspiracy theorist uh, story about military testing UFO style flying machines. According to the newspaper, the patents describes methods of reducing an aircraft's mass via methods uh, which include the generation of gravity waves and that the craft's design would allow it to create a vacuum around itself, thus allowing it to move through move at high speeds in air, water, or space. It's possible to envision a hybrid aerospace undersea craft, a HAUC, which uh, due to the physical mechanisms enabled within the inertial mass reduction device, can function as a submersible craft capable of extreme underwater speeds. Uh, the enhanced stealth capabilities, uh, the patent states, this hybrid craft would move with great ease through air, space, and water mediums uh, by being enclosed in a vacuum plasma bubble sheath. Nick Pope, former UFO investigator of the British Ministry of Defense, also told the newspaper that the patented design bears a remarkable similarity to what was reported by the USS Nimitz incident in 2004 referring to the instance of a US of US warplanes radar uh, visual encounter with an unidentified of flying object over the Pacific Ocean there was a similar incident of UFO flying underwater in Puerto Rico in 2013 the possible connection between the Nimitz incident and this patent is intriguing and it's interesting that the United States Navy Seems to be the link here, Pope observed. It's possible that the patent is inspired by the incident and is part of an attempt to work out the technology behind the objects that were chased by the Navy F-18s. This is known as reverse engineering. He also pointed out that if the U.S. military actually managed to build the technology described in the patent, such a program would be highly classified adding that if any of this works, this is very, very game-changing territory. Um, it does sound expensive, uh, Goober, but the thing is, if, if this is accurate, if, uh, if this is true, if they've actually done this, they're building spaceships. We're not talking about just little things that fly to the moon and back, but we're talking about serious spaceship technology here they're building them so who's not building spaceships they are so uh, that's just something to consider man that's uh it would be incredible if they were actually able to replicate uh, that kind of technology and as i've been saying for a long long time if you want to actually do some any kind of serious space travel uh, you, you, you need to eliminate the gravity factor. And and with this, if they have done that, and, the, and they have this vacuum envelope that they can put around themselves, they could they do some serious travel with that. Uh, maybe not with a ship of the size that they're talking about here. But, uh, yeah, they've, and they've got to, at the top of this article pictured 
uh, one of the triangle ships that that you hear reported all the time as UFOs, but are possibly not UFOs, are possibly military. So I, I, I don't know, man, but uh, to me it's very, 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 very interesting. If, it's a big if, man, because I don't, I don't know that humans are smart enough for that. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so last week, Julian Assange was arrested uh, through very dastardly means. Um, but since that time, WikiLeaks has done a huge data dump. And most of the people looking into that huge data dump are looking for dirt on Hillary or dirt on Trump or whatever political nonsense they can do. But another thing that was in that WikiLeaks dump, which you probably haven't heard about, is this from CollectiveEvolution.com. WikiLeaks document exposes a secret U.S. base on the moon. <laughs> it's in the document. It's in the WikiLeaks document. In brief, the facts, a document published by WikiLeaks, clearly implies that the U.S. had a secret base on the moon that was destroyed by Russia. It's one of the many interesting documents that suggest strange things are and have been happening on the moon. Reflect on, is our world really as it's been presented? There are millions of pages of documents that are classified by multiple countries every single year. How is it possible to really determine what's going on behind the scenes? Why does secrecy rule? The Assange arrest is scandalous in several respects, and one of them is the effort of governments, and not just not just your U.S. government, the efforts to silence a journalist who is producing materials that people in power did not want the rascal multitude, that would be you, the rascal multitude, to know, to know about, you rascals. Uh, <laughs> that's basically what happened. WikiLeaks was producing things that people ought to know about those in power. People in power don't like that, so therefore we have to silence it. And that was by uh, from Noam Chomsky there. Anyway, a note from the author here. says, I recently published an article that goes into detail about what Julian Assange arrest tells us about our world. He's got a link to it here in the article. Anyway, the, the idea that something strange may be happening on the moon is not far-fetched at all. In fact, given all of the information that is now available within the public domain on the subject, it's hard to see how it's not a fact. We'll get to some of that information later. Well, maybe we won't, but they do in the article, and you'll be able to read that uh, once I give you the link here. Uh, but first, let's draw our attention to the strange WikiLeaks document re titled, Report That You Are Destroyed Secret Moon Base. Unfortunately, the document is not an electronic document, therefore access to its full contents is not available online. For anybody truly interested in reading the entire thing, the Freedom of Information Act request may be in order. Without speculating here, we can conclude that this is what it says, a report regarding possible space wars that are taking place in the classified world. The document title alone not only exposes the reality of these alleged wars, but the possibility of a secret moon base belonging to the United States that apparently was in operation until it was destroyed by the Soviet Union, or UR. Um, and they have a link here to the WikiLeaks archive about this. Uh, anyway, so w what other information exists besides this document showing something strange is and has been happening on the moon? There's a lot of information, so it's hard to know where to begin. First of all, the idea that bases on the moon have been an open discussion within the government for a long time. Although the information isn't easy to find, it's definitely out there. A document from the government's own publishing office is a great example. It clearly shows that the, one of the goals of the U.S. government 
is to build a base on the moon as far back as 1966. They also have a source link on that. A portion of this document reads, with reference to President Kennedy and Johnson in a statement by the Honorable George P. Miller. <laughs> Honorable. He says, I also believe that we can and will achieve the goal set by the Presidents Kennedy and Johnson, a man landing on the moon before 1970. My own confidence in our rapidly advancing science and technology is such that I can visualize many more dramatic achievements ahead, although I will fix no timetable for them. Exploration of the lunar surface and possibly the establishment of one or more permanent bases there. Furthermore, decades-old documents have been declassified discussing this topic, showing just how serious and how far possible advancement, uh, advancements with these intentions have gone. Take a look at the screenshot. Well, there's a screenshot here. You can't take a look at it until you look at the article. Um, from the CIA electronic reading room in the form of a memorandum that was addressed to the CIA director regarding military thought top secret by Lieutenant General Kor Korinvinsky. Already, interest in the moon is not limited to a study of questions and a discussion of the discovered potentialities. Uh, specific projects are being worked out, which propose the construction of various structures under the surface of the moon, under the surface of the moon, from the uh, freight compartments of missiles also the employment of various versions of pneumatic structures, the United States Army Corps of Engineers, and also various Army company, American companies, Martin Aerospace, etc., uh, are conducting a great deal of work in this direction. The document above uh, really goes into detail regarding the importance of weaponizing space. This brings to mind another document from WikiLeaks, in the form of an email that was sent to politician John Podesta and uh, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, Apollo 14 astronaut, and Dr. Carl R Carol Rosen. It reads as follows. Dear John, because the war in space race is heating up, I felt you should be aware of several factors that you and I schedule our Skype talk. Uh, remember, our nonviolent ETI from the contiguous universe are helping us bring zero point energy to Earth. Remember, uh, let, 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 let me read that part again. Remember, our non violent ETI, extraterrestrial intelligence, from the contiguous universe, meaning within this particular realm, are helping us bring zero point energy to Earth. They will not tolerate any forms of military violence on Earth or in space. The following information in italics was shared with me by my colleague, Carol Rosen, who worked closely for several years with Werner von Braun before his death. Carol and I have worked on the treaty on our prevention of, place, uh, of the placement of weapons in outer space attached for your convenience. A declassified report by the Air Force Nuclear Weapons Center from June 1959 just shows just how seriously they considered a plan for Project A-119. Remember that number, A-119. In general, they wanted to investigate the capability of weapons in space as well as gain further insight into the space environment and the detonation of nuclear devices within it. These warmongers, they, they know no bounds whatsoever. Anything they can blow up, they, they, they will. Even though, according to this here, these uh, nonviolent ETI that are advancing them with technology will not tolerate military violence either on Earth or in space, which makes perfect sense. You know... <laughs> Um, I, I, I have to believe these documents, I, I, and, and I have to believe them because I want to. I don't have to believe them because they're necessarily true, but I'm, I'm going to have to, i, I got to think they are, uh, coming out on WikiLeaks in this manner. 
um, and and also not being drawn any attention to. Uh, it, it's 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 very very interesting. And there's more there's more to that article as well. Uh, more letters and such, and links to other documents, and uh, it, it's something that you might want to take the time to read through. Um, if you are interested at all in, in in what the truth from this may be, to me it, it it's astounding. It's a, it's a crazy. It's amazing. Um, but uh, there there that is for you. Okay, tonight is the full moon, but it's not just a full moon because none of them ever are right. They, all the full moons apparently have names. This particular full moon tonight, here, the 19th of April, 2019, is the full pink moon. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, what, what the hell is a pink moon? In ancient times, it was common to track the seasons by the lunar calendar as opposed to the solar calendar, which came later. Native peoples once observed the seasons by giving distinctive names to each recurring full moon. This time was not recorded by using months of the Julian or Gregorian calendar. As a result, many of the traditional names uh, that are used in the Old Farmer's Almanac come from the Native Americans who interacted with the American colonists. April's full moon is called the Full Pink Moon heralding the appearance of pink moss or wild ground flocks, one of the early spring flowers. Other names include the sprouting grass moon, the egg moon, the fish moon. Um, and they, they have a, a, a link here to uh, the full year and all the moon names, full moon names and, and their meanings. Uh, this year's April full moon is also connected to Easter. It's what is known as a Pascal full moon. The, the the moon <laughs> that uh, determines Easter's date, and they've they've got a, a link to the connection on that too, uh, so you could, might want to look at that. I, I almost said two as well. <laughs> Redundancies abundant. All right, this year's this year the full moon, full pink moon reaches fullness at 7:12 a.m. on today, Friday, April 19th. For the best view, watch the moon on the night of the 18th at near peakness and shine bright in the sky. So, I mean, the time for the full moon has already passed, but it's still, a, you go out and look at it right now, I guarantee you're going to say, hey, hey, that's the full moon. I don't see it being pink, but then again, there's no reference to it being pink other than the name of it being pink, but, oh, pinks and moons and such other things like that. I think we're all familiar with those. <laughs> Are we not? Pink Floyd. Ah, oh, yeah, very nice, very nice. New one there from Carlos Santana. Yeah, it's called Breaking Down the Door featuring Buca. I don't know how to say that name. B-U-I-K-A. Buka. So uh, apparently that's a, a brand new one from uh, an album that will be coming out on uh, June 7th here. So look for that new Santana album. Before that, we had the Brian Setzer Orchestra covering ACDC's Let There Be Rock. Uh, yeah, a little, little uh, you know, uh, rockabilly style ACDC. Cool. And we kicked it off with Big Floyd at Dark Side of the Moon. Because, you know, if it is a full pink moon, I would think the dark side would also be pink, right? <laughs> yeah, you never know. Maybe not. <laughs> but it's possible. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, let me give you a little garden update because uh, I have had no luck as yet. Uh, in uh, getting anything in my my indoor sprouts to sprout. It's possible that the dirt I used is dead dirt. I, 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 I had heard about dead dirt before, but I had not experienced dead dirt before. Um, 
but it's possible this was. Uh, the area where, where this was used to be covered uh, by gravel, which underneath the gravel was uh, this cloth, uh, this, this, this kind of, um, I don't know what you call it. it it's, a, it's a certain cloth that, that you put down to stop uh, weeds from growing through up through the gravel uh, in a zero escape type situation. Maybe I used the wrong dirt? I don't know. I'll find out soon, though, because today I went out there and I planted um, cantaloupes and a watermelon directly in that dirt rather than using it in planters on the, uh, on the inside there. So I, I think what I'm going to do, and, and I, I didn't really want to do this, but there's an area in the back, further back from this, um, behind this thing where this where stuff just grows like wild and I, I think I'll till that up and I'll put some other stuff back in there see what I can come up with back there because uh, if if this isn't going to be working for me then uh, you know what, what am I what the hell am I supposed to do um, I, I, I really I really wanted to have a good garden going this year but uh, it's possible I'm, I, I mean I'm not too late yet hello I am from the British yeah, you are. Um, it, it <laughs> it, but it, but it's uh, possible that maybe I can grow some stuff back there if this other part doesn't work. I, I want there's not enough space in the back there to grow bigger things like the watermelons, um, but I could grow other stuff back there. And there are other areas of the yard that I could use, but I I didn't want to because they're more in the middle. And uh, they there's, they get shaded a lot, so I'm not positive that uh, that's going to work out all that well. Uh, but we'll we'll find out. We'll see. Um, if I if I get after that, you know, in the next couple of days, uh, and, and then get something going on that, then then that'll work out. Uh, hopefully, possibly, differently. I don't know. We'll see. He says to you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, everything working still good? Yep, everything's fine. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's see what else. What other kind of interesting, fun, different stories? Oh, yeah. I'll save that one for the next one because I forgot I had that in there. Um, okay. Big news uh, for you all for this coming weekend. Actually, kind of, I think it started today, but it, it, it's definitely going to hit us big over the weekend. From the shtfplan.com website uh, by the person that makes that website, Max Slavo, uh, is this story. Solar storm alert! 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 Earth to be bombarded by solar particles in the next few days. Yep, there is an upcoming solar storm expected this weekend. Researchers have noticed that a sunspot will bombard the Earth with solar particles, uh, it says on Monday, but you could expect some already. Sunspots are patches of darkness on the sun, which are caused by an underlying magnetism beneath the surface. The, the solar storm occurs when the magnetism bubbles up and is released in the form of solar flares, which spew, spew, I say, cosmic particles into space. Earth is in the path of these particles. So we can expect an exceptional oral display at the poles coming soon. Auroras are caused when the solar particles hit the atmosphere. These include the northern lights, or aurora borealis, and southern lights, the aurora australis. Australis. I'm not sure. Australis? All right. <laughs> Both are expected to put on an incredible show thanks to this solar storm. The light show will appear when the magnetosphere, magnetosphere gets bombarded by solar winds and that layer of the atmosphere deflects the particles. Um, according to the Express, a cosmic forecasting website called Space Weather, it said, A minor hole in the sun's atmosphere is turning towards Earth and spewing a stream of solar wind in our direction. The estimated time of arrival arrival is April 22nd, which is on Monday. 
geomagnetic unrest and polar auroras are possible when the gaseous material arrives. Solar particles have been responsible for power grid failures and disruption of your communication systems on your planet Earth when they've been strong enough. A surge of particles can lead to high currents in the magnetosphere, which can cause a higher than normal level of electricity and power lines. The results could be devastating, especially considering Earth's magnetic field is weakening. Yep, eventually a solar storm could cause a, as a solar storm could cause electrical transformers and power station blowouts and a loss of power. Solar storms can also affect satellites in orbit and potentially lead to a lack of GPS navigation, mobile phone signals, and satellite TV. According to this here, Earth's magnetic field is getting significantly weaker. The magnetic North Pole is shifting at an accelerating pace and scientists readily admit that a sudden pole shift could potentially cause trillions of dollars in damage. Today, most of us take the protection provided by Earth's magnetic field completely for granted. It's essential. Well, most people don't even understand it or know that it exists. It's a, it is essentially a colossal force field which surrounds our planet and makes life possible. And even with such protections, a giant solar storm could potentially hit our planet and completely fry the power grid. But as our magnetic field continues to get weaker and weaker, even much smaller solar storms will have the potential to be cataclysmic. And once the magnetic field gets weak enough, we will be facing uh, bigger problems, to say the least. As you will see below, well, you won't see until you look at this, but if, uh, if enough solar radiation starts reaching our, reaching our planet, none of us, including you and I, will survive. That little bit there by, by Michael Snyder of the Economic Collapse blog, uh, the weakening magnetic field could have apocalyptic implications for all of us. Increased cancer rates will occur, and there will be an increasingly dangerous uh, outcomes of fairly minor solar storms, such as the one that we expect on Monday. So uh, beware of that. Now, I, I personally, uh, I've always had a problem uh, with geomagnetic storms. They, they affect me in a, in a not pleasant way. Um, so I'm not looking forward to the solar storm. Uh, uh, and, and I don't have, I'm not in an area uh, that would see uh, any kind of cool aurora borealis type stuff. Um, although that would be cool to see. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll look forward to that, see what's going to happen. Uh, uh, maybe get some uh, interruptions in various uh, communication systems, uh, various signals that are transmitted via air. And uh, maybe some, some power fluctuations going on. I don't know. We'll see. It'll be interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really looking forward to it. Okay. I've got a couple articles about this day in history. Um, I couldn't find anything that I was really looking for, looking at. Um, so we'll, we'll just uh, cover what we got here. Because uh, these are from, eh, I don't necessarily want to call them mainstream sites, but not not the type of sites I was looking for. <laughs> All right, the first one is is from uh, back then magna dash magna dot blogspot dot com. It was posted on uh, April twenty twelve, April nineteen twenty twelve. So, on this day in history, in 1995, was the Oklahoma City bombing. In 1993 was when all the murders happened down there in Waco, Texas, by your U.S. government, Janet Reno, Bill Clinton. Yes, they, they destroyed the Branch Davidian complex, killing David Koresh and many, many others. Uh, 1933, on April 19th, the U.S. officially 
went off the gold standard. In 1892, Charles Dureya claims to have driven the first automobile in the U.S. in Springfield, Massachusetts. In 1775, on April 19, the American Revolutionary War began with the Battle of Lexington and Concord, which began the American Revolutionary War. Um, apparently, in 1987, the Simpsons were born on April 19th. Huh. And they list some people that were born on April 19th in various years. Um, Jane Mansfield, 1933. Dudley Moore, 35. Tim Curry, 46. Uh, Al, Unser, Al Unser, Jr., 1962. Ashley Judd, 1968. Uh, James Franco, 1978. Uh, I don't know. Maria Sharapova. I think she's a tennis player, right? 1987. She was born. Um, so here's the link to that for you. Hansel has joined us. And then from this other site called dayinhistory.net. Uh, it says here, facts and myths about April 19th. April 19th is the 109th day of the year of 2019 in the Gregorian calendar. There are 256 days remaining until the end of the year. Uh, under the Julian calendar, the, this day is April 6, 2019. Okay, but we're not on the Julian calendar. We're on the Gregorian. Uh, a Friday. Both day of the week are the same, but did you notice the difference in the Gregorian calendar? I did. Um, when this day started... 432,120 hours have elapsed since midnight of January 1st, 1970. The Unix Epoch. Strange as it may seem, if we name this day after a polygon, it will be called Hecta Nanageddon Day? Okay. Whatever you say. Um, Aries is the zodiac sign if you're born on this day. Diamond is the birthstone. Opal is the mystical birthstone. <laughs> According to the Luna Solar Chinese calendar, there are 281 days remaining before the next Chinese New Year. New Year, by the way, if you're not from, you don't know, we are presently in the Chinese New Year of the Rat. Um, <laughs> ancient Mayan civilization believes the end of the world. Like I said, this was produced in 2012, so. Uh, so they believe the end of the world. Of course, that's not what the, the Mayans did not believe that was going to be the end of the world. That's just the way it was being told to you, that the end of the world was going to happen December 21st, 2012. And uh, so, <laughs> all right, all right. Um, let's see, uh, Aries, where, where's the thing here? Oh, historical events. Here we go. Um, the second Diet of Spare bans Lutheranism. Uh, on, in 1529, on April 19th, Marie Antoinette married Louis XIV in a proxy wedding in 1770. John Adams secures the Dutch Republic's recognition in uh, 1809. Austrian corps is defeated by the forces of the Duchy of Warsaw in the Battle of Raisin. I don't know how you say that. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? The Treaty of London established Belgium as a kingdom in 1839. 1928, 125th and final facile of the Oxford English Dictionary was published. Uh, 1942, World War II in Poland, the Majdan Tatarski Ghetto is established. Uh, 1945, diplomatic relations between the Soviet Union and Guatemala are established. 1971, Charles Manson was sentenced to death for conspiracy to commit the Tate LaBianca murders. You notice he was never uh, sentenced for murder because, well, he didn't kill anyone. And in 1985, the United the USSR performs nuclear tests at Eastern Kazakhstan, and then they go through some deaths and births and uh, other such things such as that. But again, not the stuff I was really looking for, uh, for the April 19th date. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of really, really bad stuff 
that's happened on April 19th uh, throughout the years. Uh, and I don't even think any of these mentioned the Deepwater Horizon, um, which may have been the last big April 19th uh, issue um, from not, not very long ago, uh, which is something I knew about ahead of time. Don't ask me how, but I did. Um, <laughs> just like I knew about Fukushima, but not directly about Fukushima. I only knew something big was going to happen on uh, March 11th of that year. So, uh, anyway, so there's that. There's that. All right, what else? What else we got for you? <laughs> Oop, I clicked the wrong thing. Not, no big deal. All right. So you'll save those. Oh, here's a good one. It's uh, not about the year or space or anything like that. But it's about something very disgusting that has, has and is continuing to go on right now. And if I went and looked at my driver's license, I would see upon my driver's license that it says I am an organ donor. Are you also an organ donor? Do you have that on your driver's license? Assuming you have a driver's license. Uh, some of y'all don't, I know that. <laughs> Organs cut out of patients' bodies, even while conscious and aware. Horrifying new study reveals. If you're an organ donor, greedy hospital and unethical doctors may start harvesting your organs before you're dead. Yep. You might have chosen that status out of a sense of goodwill, thinking that the medical personnel don't harvest your organs until after you're actually dead. <laughs> but a new scientific study reveals that organ harvesting is very likely taking place while patients are still alive, conscious, and, and, and there on the table. Maybe your heart stopped beating at that point. This means that patients are fully aware and experience all the pain, the doctors rapidly cutting into their bodies and slicing away their organs to generate transplant profits for the corrupt medical system. Even when your heart stops beating, by the way, in case you were unaware, you're still conscious for several minutes. You're not really dead when your heart just stops beating, even though that's what the doctors use to pronounce you dead. People who have survived cardiac arrest uh, later accurately described what was happening all around them after their hearts stopped beating. Uh, according to Dr. Sam Parnia, a researcher who studies consciousness after death, he said they'll describe watching doctors and nurses working. They'll describe having an awareness of full conversion of visual, uh, of visual things that were going on that would otherwise not be known to them. In other words, you're alive. You're still alive. You're conscious. You're aware for several minutes after that heart stops beating. Just because the heart stops doesn't instantly disconnect the activity of your brain. That should be pretty freaking obvious. But the corrupt, evil medical system has whitewashed this issue for years, pretending that death is instantaneous. This means you are essentially trapped inside your dead body with your brain still working reports Fox News. If you're an organ donor, this that's the moment in which doctors slice into your body without using anesthesia since they figure you're dead, you, you don't need no anesthesia, and start rapidly harvesting your organs. You feel every bit of it, but you're trapped inside your body and cannot move or scream. If you're an organ donor, greedy hospitals and unethical doctors may start harvesting your organs uh, they could probably just come into your house and do it now. I don't know. Uh, doctors are pushed by the medical industry to harvest as many organs as possible since the organs are free, free to the hospital. What do you want of them? You're dead. Oh, maybe not. Yet that same hospital can generate millions of dollars in revenue from an organ transplant. The organ trade is steeped in unethical medical crimes and horrifying realities that almost no one dares acknowledge. Over the years, there have been many reports that claim some doctors dishonestly declare a patient to be dead even when they know they're not in order to start harvesting their organs before their heart stops beating. 
a shocking investigative book called The Red Market by Scott Carney documents the unethical practices of the organ trade. The book subtitle is On the Trail of the World's Organ Brokers, Bone Thieves, Blood Farmers, and Child Traffickers. And it lays out the horrifying truth about the organ harvesting industry and the medical establishment has successfully covered it up for decades. <sighs> In summary, the entire push for you to become an organ donor is based on medical system profits. They need your organs in order to charge patients for an organ transplant procedure, drugs in a lifetime of repeat doctor visits. In seeking to capture these profits, they falsely imply that somehow organ transplants are free to everyone, as if hospitals and doctors are volunteering their time and resources to save lives. Lie, massive, huge, freaking lie. In truth, organ transplants are a huge profit center for many hospitals, and while hospitals and doctors reap enormous profits on these procedures, they pay no money whatsoever to the family of the deceased who, uh, person whose organs made the entire thing possible in the first place. Now, there's some videos and such here in this, uh, blog, this post, and you may want to check out uh, some of that there because... Um, uh, it's disturbing, but uh, I, I have that on my driver's license that I am an organ donor, and I can't just, like, scrape it off. It's on there. It was, they ask you a, a question on the on the application when you're getting a driver's license, and I said, sure, yeah, yeah, go ahead, put me on there. Um, but that driver's license is still good for a few more years. Will I, will I change to not be a donor next time? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe they'll cut you up, but uh, 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 whatever. Um, so there's that wonderful piece of news for you. <laughs> oh, God. Why do I keep clicking that? <laughs> All right. Let's see if there's something else I want to do before I hit another set of music here. Yeah, I think I'll do this one because it's uh, also related to the evil, corrupt medical system and a certain tribe. Guberzilla says a certain tribe. He doesn't mention that tribe. I think he know, I know who he's talking about, but I'll just not assume that I do. <laughs> Anti-vax moms sue New York City as U.S. heads toward record measles spread which I don't believe for a second that it's a, a record measles spread. However, they tell you, well, record measles spread this century. This century is only 19 years old. So possibly that that amount of it is true. Um, I, whether it is or not, I, I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, five unnamed mothers in New York City filed a lawsuit on Monday, April 15th, seeking to block the city's mandatory vaccination order in areas hit by a massive measles outbreak that has raged since October. Massive. Remember that. Remember they're calling it massive. And it's been going on since October. City health officials announced, that, uh, announced the orders earlier this month as they declared a public health emergency over the outbreak, which has sickened... 329 people so far, mostly children, which makes sense because most adults had the measles when they were children and no longer have to worry about it. Children in my era, which was the 60s, as I was a child in the 60s, born in 1960, every kid got the freaking measles and it was no big deal. But now it's a freak out thing. And they have to declare public health emergencies and call them outbreaks. So 329 people, that's a massive measles outbreak, according to them. And it's been going on since October. So if you break that down, that's about 50 people a month. According to the city's order, all unvaccinated people in the affected zip codes must receive measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine prove immunity or have a valid medical exemption. 
how do you prove immunity? I, I, I just don't know. Violators could face a fine of up to $1,000. Uh, that's $1,000 a day, by the way. Yes. In the lawsuit, the mothers claim that the outbreak does not constitute a dangerous epidemic. It doesn't. But they put in here, those a virus can cause severe complications and even death. Yeah, very rarely. And uh, that the city's orders are arbitrary and capricious, which they are. Moreover, they allege that the MMR vaccine has significant safety concerns. The article says this is false, but it's nonsense. Uh, it's not false. It does have significant safety concerns. And that the order violates their religious freedom. And I don't know about thinking about religious freedom, but your personal freedoms not to be uh, poisoned, I think, is probably a good one. <laughs> the lawsuit is just the latest example of the anti-vaccine parents challenging the legality of public health officials' efforts to curb measles cases, which are mounting at an unprecedented rate. Oh, the boogeyman's out to get you there for sure. As the mothers filed their lawsuit Monday, the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Creation, uh, and <laughs> updated this year's nationwide wide measles count, reporting a whopping 555 cases in 20 states since last October. That's not whopping. <laughs> the surge is largely due to the parents in insular communities uh, refusing to vaccinate their children based on what they're calling here in this article misinformation and fear-mongering, which they're the ones doing the fear-mongering. These vaccine pushers are the ones doing the fear-mongering. Anyway, there's, there's far more nonsense here in the article, should you care to read it uh, for yourself. Um, well, I, I think they did fight a war over self-ownership, uh, Rob Works, but apparently apparently that's all been forgotten now. That's, that's just been totally erased from, from history that that's actually happened, or why it happened, or how it happened, or who was the ones fighting who, and uh, yeah. All right, we're going to do some more jams here right now. What have we got lined up for you? Oh, yeah, this is a brand new one from the Hollywood Vampires. They're a great band, too. Um, and they, they got a new album coming out, uh, Hollywood Vampires. I think you'll enjoy this. If you like good music, good rock and roll. Ah, oh, yeah, very nice, very nice. George Thorogood and the Delaware Destroyers. Uh, this was just recorded on April 9th at the Houston House of Blues there. Get a haircut and get a real job. Yeah, sorry about Brother Bob there. Anyway, <laughs> before that, we had an honest government ad about Julian Assange brought to you by the United Bitches of America. Uh, prior to that was the pretty reckless doing my medicine that was the censored video. Uh, they blocked out all the boob shots. But uh, the, the real video is up there on the YouTube, should you so desire. And we kicked it off with the Hollywood Vampires off their upcoming new album. Uh, the track is called Who's Laughing Now. If, if you're not familiar with the, uh, that, that album will be out June 21st. Uh, but the uh, Hollywood Vampires, if you're not familiar with them, are Joe Perry, Johnny Depp, Alice Cooper... Yeah, it's a it's a it's a quite the interesting band there. Uh, so uh, for for those of you uh, that uh, like good rock and roll, um, there's, there's definitely that's definitely good rock and roll and, and from coming from that band. So looking for that, looking forward uh, to that new album for sure. So anyway, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, what else do I have to tell you about? I don't know. I'm thinking. Hey, quiet, quiet down there. These videos, sometimes they just start up on their own. <laughs> Don't ask me why. They just do. 
They're not supposed to. I got this thing here. I'm sure I've mentioned it prior. Uh, that I have this uh, thing here that's supposed to stop videos from auto starting. But it sometimes takes a few seconds for that to kick in uh, on on some videos. Not all the time, just sometimes. And uh, so uh, it's, it's a little bit annoying, but eh, we can deal with it. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Cowboy Tech over here in the chat uh, just posted up an article here, and I'm going to take a peek at it and see what we got going on there because... It's right up my alley. It's my kind of news. It's the kind of thing I enjoy reading about. Uh, and this is on a website called interestingengineering.com. A massive asteroid just came awfully close to Earth. The house-sized asteroid, I don't know how massive that really is, but house-sized asteroid was only spotted by NASA nine days before it flew by. Of course, you're not hearing about it until after it already passed by, which, well, it's from NASA, so what do you expect? Uh, an asteroid the size of a house whizzed past Earth yesterday. It wasn't close enough to do any damage, and thankfully, it's the closest space rock we'll see this year. The asteroid was only discovered last Tuesday by NASA's Catalina Sky Survey near Tucson, Arizona just nine days before it flew by Earth. Uh, named 2019 GC6, the space rock was flying past Earth this morning at 2.41 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, at its closest, it was about 136,000 miles, or slightly more than half the average distance between the Earth and the Moon. Uh, the rock was traveling at a relative speed of 12,600 miles per hour. According to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the rock's diameter is within a factor of two of 49 feet, which means that it may be up to 98 feet wide. Any object that comes within 8 million kilometers of Earth, uh, Earth's orbit is big enough to cause significant damage, classified as potentially dangerous, potentially hazardous, near-Earth object at NEO. Uh, that does not actually mean any of these rocks are at risk of smashing into us. NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, right, Planetary Defense Coordination Office, is responsible for scanning the skies for potential hazards. That don't sound like they really were doing any kind of defensive action there. Just telling you, oh, there's a rocket, and uh, we'll tell you about it after it goes by. So despite a massive effort, Many asteroids go by undetected until the last minute. Some aren't even discovered until after they have flown by. Forecasters for the year don't show any more big rocks lead, uh, heading towards us. Uh, but in addition to 2019 GC6, another space rock came pretty close to us on March 28th. Dub 2019 FC1 was less than half as far away from Earth as this one. Asteroids do pose a threat to Earth, and lots of research is put into thinking about what to do if there's one discovered on an impact path. Well, if you got a planetary defense group, oh yeah, it's not really a planetary defense group, is it? Uh, <laughs> if you have seen the 1998 film Armageddon, you might be right in thinking that NASA will simply send a ragtag team of drillers to detonate the asteroid. But recent research shows that, yeah, that's not really going to happen. A study published in by John Hopkins uh, explores the new strategies for asteroid impact and deflection strategies. We used to believe that the larger the object, the more easily it would break because bigger objects are more likely to have flaws. Our findings, however, show that asteroids are stronger than we used to think and require more energy to be completely shattered, according to Charles L. Meir, a Ph.D. graduate from Johns Hopkins. Uh, understanding the asteroid is uh, difficult uh, due to the complexities of space, but researchers have created complex models, based upon nothing really, that propose a variety of ways to accomplish asteroid destruction. All totally theoretical and, uh, yeah, not going to happen. 
Thanks for that, Cowboy Tech. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, I love those kind of stories. Hey, more cowbell. We needed more cowbell. We got more cowbell. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you gotta like that. Uh, all right. Let's <laughs> see what else we got in here for you. Oh, boy. Okay, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. 420. And what's going on for 420? Well, if you like junk food, crap food, um, and you live in Colorado, tonk, tonk, tonk. Oh, the cowbell sound. Okay, I got it. Um, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, MC. <laughs> so if you like junk food and you live in Colorado, uh, you, you might want to head out to Carl's Jr. and test out the new cannabis burger not really a cannabis burger it's, it's really a misnomer but uh, let's get to it here fast food chain carl's jr will roll out a new cannabis burger for one day in one of it one of its colorado restaurants uh carl's jr is calling their new creation the rocky mountain high cheeseburger delight and will only be sold on 420 <laughs> You know, get this shit out of my way. Damn daily caller, always putting crap in your way. The burger sets its cannabis or gets its cannabis status from a hemp-based CBD oil that is infused into the burger's signature sauce. Uh, CBD or cannabinoidal, cannabinoidal, cannabinoidal is one. <laughs> whatever I can never say that word is one of the two main chemicals that occur naturally in cannabis plants, the other being the more fun one, THC. Uh, while THC is the uh, psychoactive chemical found in cannabis, it is responsible for the high people feel when using it. CBD, however, does not have any psychoactive effects and is used uh, for people by people for medical purposes without any psychoactive and cognitive results uh, of using cannabis. So what's the point? <laughs> no, I know. CBD oil is great for a lot of stuff. But uh, yeah, not for me. CBD oil is used in a wide range or uh, by a wide range of people for many different reasons from chronic illness to depression and even severe acne. Well, I, I guess people that generally go to Carl's Jr. are probably the, more the ones that have the severe acne. Not necessarily Carl's Jr., of course, all the rest of the fast food joints as well. The new Rocky Mountain High Cheeseburger Delight ties back to our core strategy of being the first to bring bold and unexpected flavors, uh, not to mention disgusting, uh, that are th th at the forefront of hot restaurant trends to a quick service menu. Uh, Trevino, Patty Trevino, Senior Vice President uh, of Carl's Jr., uh, told CNN Business that she hopes this burger will get new customers uh, that are new and young and are more open to different flavors of products. How about using some real meat? <laughs> how about that? Uh, how would that work out for you? <laughs> oh, boy, they probably don't want to do that. Oh, <laughs> uh, Right, yeah, the, the, a rock that big, Frumpy, falling into the, a big lake or the oceans uh, would definitely cause a huge wave, whether it would be a tsunami-sized wave, uh, probably, uh, depending where it hit and how it hit and all that kind of stuff, but uh, yeah. You don't really want that landing. The yeah, best place would be like the middle of a desert somewhere, you know? But since we're speaking of fast food, let's talk about this disgusting story. <laughs> oh, God. Why? Why would you do this? I don't know why they would do this, but they have or they are. It says here, and, and I don't know why they didn't just put the name Del Taco in the headline rather than say Taco Bell competitor, but that's what they did. Taco Bell competitor 
embraces plant-based, quote, meat, unquote, and its tacos. Uh, the American chain franchise Del Taco just announced that it will be the first fast food joint to sell not meat, <laughs> plant-based beyond meat, as an alternative to beef starting April 25th. The move doubles as the the move doubles the number of fast food chains to feature plant-based meat alternatives uh, from the from one to two. Earlier this month, Burger King announced it had partnered with Impossible Foods to create meatless Whoppers, which I thought they were already meatless Whoppers. Eh. And now with Del Taco working with Beyond Meat, plant-based meat alternatives have a real shot at going mainstream. Yeah, until everybody starts getting sick from them. <laughs> yeah. oh, Del Taco and Burger King are sourcing their meat alternatives from different companies, but the competition, competition doesn't concern Ethan Brown, Beyond Meat's founder and CEO, who told Vox that he's happy to see the meat alternative market grow. Definitely there's a sense that there's a movement going on. Uh, I guarantee you, if you eat these, there will be a movement going on. And it will be rapid and coming out of your asshole. <laughs> there's going to be some, some rocketing diarrhea if you eat this stuff. Oh, boy. Anyway, um, so he said he thinks competition is good and helps grow awareness of the sector. Moving away from beef farming could help in the fictitious greenhouse gas emissions, but it will cause uh, certain other ga greenhouse uh, butthole, ga butthole emissions and promote animal welfare. So now, hangover tacos can help you feel better in more ways than one. Well, it'll clear out your colon. So, uh, <laughs> this is just disgusting. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to pass on those, uh, well, I'm going to pass on Taco Bell and Del Taco and Burger King and Carl's Jr. and all any of the others. I'll pass on all of them. Yeah, I used to really enjoy the fast food back in the day. But since I've stopped having fast food for many years now, uh, not, that, not that I haven't occasioned one a couple of times while on the road, um, uh, being as there's not much else out there, um, I feel much better not eating, not, not eating, uh, that nasty crap that they serve there at those places. Try eating raw meat. I, I've had raw meat. I've had steak tartare. <laughs> but thanks for the suggestion, Cowbell. More. Cowbell more. <laughs> anyway, Cowbell says uh, plant-based meat is good. Um, Burger King letting people have the Impossible Vegan Whoppers. He's going to eat those. Da -da -da. He's eaten plant-based meat for 10 years. And he's still alive. They taste the same. Oh, no, 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 no. They don't taste the same. I guarantee you that. <laughs> All right. So on to this next thing here. I don't know. Did Grammy cover this? She, she might have covered this. Uh, anyway, I, I find it. I find uh, this information is disturbing. I'm just going to give you a, a little bit of it, but um, I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I like... Uh, Whatever. Asmo, I mean, uh, more, more cowbells. Let's try some garden stuff. All right, here you go, some garden stuff. 2019's Dirty Dozen. Which foods have the most pesticides? Well, stuff that you eat every day. And stuff that you think is good and healthy for you. Potatoes, yes. Uh, celery, tomatoes, pears, cherries, uh Peaches, grapes, uh, apples, nectarines, kale, spinach, and strawberries. These are the most poisonous foods that you could possibly eat, and they have a bonus of hot peppers. 
Um, so while you're out there enjoying food that you buy at the grocery store, uh, just be aware that you are being fed poison. Lots of poison by the government's demand. They want you to eat poison. That's all i got to say about that article. There's a lot of information in there, should you care to peruse it at a later time. And our, our last food article here we're going to go into right now. Yeah, 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 it's all good and fine. From Mercola. I've tried this, and I'm not good at it. I, I, I really, I've, I've tried this, and... You know, it's just it's it's difficult. I I I I think maybe minimizing rather than uh, eliminating or or stopping for a period of time. How fasting and minimizing lectins can be a benefit to your health. You may want to look up lectins and see exactly what they are. Uh, Anyway, at a glance here, patients with autoimmune conditions will typically experience significant improvement when adopting a lectin-free diet. And if I can get a quick uh, thing here, a lectin is any class of proteins, chiefly of a plant origin, which binds specifically to certain sugars and so uh, cause ad what ag ag mutation of a particular cell type. So plant-based proteins have the lectins in them. In a recent paper, Dr. Stephen Gundry showed that 90 of 102 patients had complete remission of all biomarkers and autoimmune disease by removing lectins and all within a six-month period. If you have a leaky gut from a disturbed microbiome and eat a lot of lectins, Saturated fats may worsen your health by allowing lipopolysaccharides to piggyback on the fats through your intestine wall. People with autoimmune diseases typically have low vitamin D levels and may need higher than normal doses. Vitamin D is essentially for stem cell proliferation in your gut. And until the gut barrier is healed, your absor absorption of vitamin D may be impaired. Well, unless you get it from the sun, I would think. I mean, that does go through your gut. Uh, water fasting is a powerful metabolic intervention that activates autophagy, allowing your body to clean itself out and triggers the regeneration of stem cells. Anyway, this article goes through and it tells you about the nasty stuff about lectins, but it also uh, promotes the benefits of fasting. Now... When I said that I've tried this, I don't mean I've tried uh, eliminating lectins. I have no desire to do that. I like lectins. I, I like plant-based proteins, like such as nuts uh, and and uh, other other plants that have protein. And I I have no problem with lectins. I don't have uh, autoimmune crap or other things that prevent me from absorbing my vitamin D. Um, and it talks about the, how the saturated fats may if you have this problem, uh, or harm you more than others. Um, but but the fasting part, that that's that's the problem, the thing that I've tried on various uh, occasions and have had a problem. I, I just can't do it. I, I I can't fast more than one day. I've 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 done certain certainly done uh, single day fasts from time to time, and, but uh, you know around. Uh, 20 hours or so <laughs> it, it gets difficult I, I'm not I'm not uh, there's no question about that that uh, it's not easy I, I know people do it um, for longer than you know a couple days three days four days they, they could fast for that long I, I personally if you can good for you because it's good to clear yourself out from time to time uh, of all the nasty crap that gets built up inside your body. Especially those of us that are big red meat eaters. And, and I do like the red meat. Uh, uh, more Cowbell. Why do I keep, keep trying to call you Asmo? Uh, more Cowbell asks, have you tried a fasting mimicking diet? That's a diet that's like 700 calories, 
mostly fat fruit. I have not tried that. I'll look into that. Thank you for that. All right, let's play some more music right here. And uh, oh wait, I have another story before we, before we can play the music because the story ties into the, the track first track that I'm going to play. And um, I, I just found it interesting. And and so <laughs> here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Owners cry from happiness after dog they presume dead returns from the grave. Oh, thank you for that link there. Also, uh, more cowbell. Um, I will uh, bookmark that for later reading. All right. It's not a PR stunt dedicated to the recent cinematic release of the Pet Cemetery remake. A stubborn dog whose masters thought he was dead has really returned to them from the grave. In Russia's Far East, uh, Dick had a difficult life. I guess that's the dog's name, Dick, D-I-K. <laughs> the 18-year-old mutt outlived two of his owners, was ran over by a car, and got lost. But it turned out his most bizarre adventure was still ahead of him. The old dog fell unconscious, and his masters determined that the poor guy had passed away. So with heavy hearts, they took their pet and buried it. But Dick agreed that it w uh, disagreed that it was his time to go. He regained composure, dug himself out of the ground. Thankfully, his grave was quite shallow. The heroic pooch was picked up by activists from the animal shelter and returned to his owners. Dick's masters thought uh, shouldn't be judged too harshly over the whole ordeal. Uh, Irina Mordova from the animal shelter, who shared the story online, said they loved their dog very much, and there were tears when the reunion happened. Also, one can only wish Dick good health, longevity, and a trouble-free life. The dog's 18 years old. I, 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 you know, I don't think he's got much longer, no matter how you look at it. Um, but uh, either way. Um, yeah, interesting story. Dog died. Dog didn't die. I don't know. And it says it, it wasn't a promo, but, uh, you know, it's possible that it was. It's possible that it was. <laughs> this is the Ramones. Ah, oh, yeah, very nice, very nice. Uh, cream covering Robert Johnson's Crossroads there for you. I'm on Rose Retro Release. Excellent stuff. Yes, indeed. Uh, that video just came out uh, yesterday, I think. Yeah, yesterday. On Rose Retro. Check him out over there on uh, the YouTube. He puts out a lot of great videos of old classic tunage. Uh, before that, we had Green Jelly. Green Jello. Their, their name is Green Jello. Well, it was. They got sued by the Jello Corporation there. Uh, they had to change their name to Green Jelly. Doing Three Little Pigs. I, I put that in because uh, Vin E. during his show earlier today uh, was doing the Three Little Pigs story. <laughs> anyway, we kicked it off with the Ramones doing Pet Cemetery uh, because of the dead dog. The, the dead dick dog that was not dead. Or that came back to life after being buried in a pet cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bye bye. <laughs> oh, I love those kind of stories. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. All right, what else we got that's good here for you? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, this will work. This will work out. This will work out. Oh, stop that. My, 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 my little, my little, my little thingy, my little cursor thingy didn't line up right to exactly how I wanted it to. So, uh, yeah. We'll do that. We'll do that. All right. And we will do, where's my, where's my, where's my, there it is. My list of those, my list of those, there's a quite the list. And we will use, um, maybe this one. 
this one. Let's see if this is a good one. Nope, that video is unavailable. Well, let's just unmark that then. I'll remove that bookmark. Because that is no longer available. I hate when that happens. When you when you have a video all lined up, you know, and you wanna you wanna you wanna share it and then Well, yeah. Sometimes you just don't get to. Alright. All right, everything looked good. Everything looked good. Let's see here. We got six. We got six, fourteen. We got uh, fourteen and four, eighteen and eighteen. Okay, that'll take me to forty-two. Forty-two. All right. All right. All right. Got that. Got that. Got that. Got that. All right. Let's do a little tech news here for you, if we can. All right, Cowboy Tech posted this link over there in the RLM chat earlier today. Now, I've never used this particular software, but maybe some others have. I use a lot of various other video editing softwares, but I've never used this particular one. This is posted on the HackerNews.com. Popular video editing software website hacked to spread banking Trojan. If you have downloaded the VSDC multimedia editing software between late February to late March this year, there are high chances that your computer has been infected with a banking trojan and an information stealer. Of course, if you are on a Windows machine, which this is probably Windows software, if you're on a Windows machine and you're running malware bytes, you'd be safe. I don't know about other 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 anti uh, malware type soft uh, applications. Uh, the official website of the VSD software, one of the most popular free video editing and converting apps with over 1.3 million monthly visitors, was hacked. Unfortunately, once again, according to the new report by Dr. Webb, published today and shared with the Hacker News. Hackers hijacked the VSD website and replaced its software download links, leading to malware versions tricking visitors into installing the dangerous Win32.BOLIK.2 banking Trojan and KPOT stealer. Even more ironic is that despite being so popular among multimedia editors, the VSD website is running and offering the software downloads over an insecure HTTP connection. Uh, though it's unclear how the hackers this time managed to hijack the website, researchers revealed... Am I, am I on here? Am I, am, I, am I talking? Right, okay. Sometimes I forget if I have my mic's on or not. Uh, even more ironic is that despite being... Oh, I already read that. Though it's unclear how the hackers this time managed to hijack the website, researchers revealed that the breach was reportedly never intended to infect users, unlike last year's attack. So if you have downloaded this particular software, I guess it's fixed now, uh, so it shouldn't be a problem going forward. But if you have uh, downloaded that software, uh, you may want to check your machine a bit, because there could well be a issue with it. So there's that for you. Uh, okay, okay, this is a happy little story. Um, Canonical today announced the release of Ubuntu 19.04 Disco Dingo uh, with Linux 5.0 and GNOME 3.32. Disco Dingo features performance improvements and visual tweaks. Whether or not you upgrade, Disco Dingo lays the groundwork for future long-term support releases of Ubuntu. Uh, so it says here, uh, keep in mind that version 19.04 is not long-term support, not an LTS system, uh, but it's meaning it's only supported until January of next year, so less than a year. Uh, Ubuntu 1904 introduces GNOME 3.32, with higher frame rates, smoother startup animations, quicker icon load times, and a reduced CPU plus GPU load. Uh, well, if that's all due to the, the GNOME, you could put that GNOME probably on uh, wh wh whatever version of, a, of Linux you're running, 
I like the GNOME desktop. Um, I'm presently not running a GNOME desktop because they got a little goofy there for a while. But uh, hey, if you're if you're a Ubuntu user, you Ubuntu fan, Ubuntu experimenter, you may want to check out the new version of Ubuntu. Uh, may, maybe just put it into a virtual machine or something, you know? Because cool. Yeah, I, uh, the new the new software is always fun to play with. Uh, Alrighty then. <laughs> uh, this one, um, I'm not sure what to make of it. I mean, I want to think it's evil because because it's a Microsoft deal, but it sounds pretty freaking cool. So yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, from fanaticalfuturist.com comes this article. Microsoft have created an all-in-one desktop DNA storage device. And it's not really for you, uh, but but the implications of what could what it could be going forward are very interesting. Uh, why this matters, in brief, as our data volumes explode, we need new ways to store it all, and DNA is a perfect solution if we can get it to work. By all reports, the modern world is facing a tsunami of data as we produce exabytes of this stuff every day. And DNA is emerging as one, one of, if not the most viable way to store it and preserve it for generations to come. With new research breaking records more regularly than Usain Bolt, now researchers supported by Microsoft, who recently spent millions of dollars on customized DNA strands to prove they could store hundreds of petabytes in just one gram of DNA, then follow it up with the creation of the world's first DNA storage file system, have created the world's first system that can automatically translate digital information into genetic code and retrieve it again, which is kind of important if you're going to store that data. You're, you're, you're going to need a way to uh, retrieve it. <laughs> yeah, that's always a problem. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I remember they, the, the light cubes they were going to use some years ago that never really actually came to fruition. So uh, that that is... Uh, we'll see. Uh, keep an eye out for DNA storage devices. Um, yeah. All right, well, we're... Oh, let me just do this real quick. I don't really know if I really have time for it, but uh, that's okay. We're going to do it anyway because uh, some of you all out there um, may run into this problem if you are running an evil Microsoft operating system. Sophos, a vast, warn of Windows machines failing to boot after the latest Microsoft patch. The patch that kills your machine. And uh, well, another one of the many patches that kill your machine. Antivirus makers Sophos and Avast are warning that users installing a recent Windows update may cause their PCs to lock up or fail to boot. In notices filed Monday, Avast reported that older machines running Windows 7 or Windows 8.1 are becoming locked and frozen on startup after a certain Windows updates are applied. And it lists the KB numbers here for you. Uh, that are interested and uh, will be paying attention to that. Um, so check it out, PCWorld.com. All these links, by the way, that I, that I talk about here will be in tomorrow's blog for this program. So let's uh, hit the uh, final set here, and uh, we will be back. Yeah, we will be back. <laughs> <laughs> try, 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 trying to think where I'm at here. Anyway, this particular uh, first video here, I was at this concert. I saw this. I saw this performance back in 1983. Yipper. You want metal? You got it. <laughs> Yeah, Rob, I was laughing at Van Meter's comment. <laughs> oh, that 
cracked me up. All right, Panda Lamp. <laughs> bam, 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 Panda Lamp. All right, um, <laughs> that was the Mason Rack Band there doing the Black Betty, one of their versions of Black Betty. They, they have some great recordings of that. Uh, before that was the main squeeze doing uh, Led Zeppelin's No Quata. And we kicked it off with Quiet Riot doing Mental Health at the US Festival, the U.S. Festival, the US Festival, back in 1983 out there in uh, Southern California. So that was great stuff. And uh, that little uh, audio error, I don't know what happened on that main squeeze video where the audio didn't start at first and I had to go back and restart it. Well, whatever. Uh, that caused me to go over a little bit. <laughs> Anyway, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It's been a great time. Have yourselves a great 420, which is now here in the mountain time and already a couple hours in on the East Coast, and California's still waiting for 420, but they're all stoned out there. They won't know the difference. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow is the dork table at noon. I'll be on uh, at noon on Sunday with the Blues. We're playing trivia here in the chat. Hal Anthony comes up at... 3 p.m. Eastern, noon o'clock Pacific on uh, Sunday. And uh, Monday is myself at 7 p.m. Eastern with the Grim, Grim Leftovers. Uh, Flash comes on Tuesday in a perfect world, probably with Vinny. And uh, Grammy will be back on Wednesday at her normal time. Thanks, everybody. Like I said, have a great 420, a great Easter if that's what you do, or if you do something else, whatever. Have a, just have a good weekend. Talk to y'all later. Moose will be back next week with the Freakers Ball, so talk to you then. Peace!